In this tutorial, we will see how Angular application works internally. First, we will see the overall picture of the files, which contains the configuration and HTML contents. Whenever user runs the command ng serve, Angular CLI will start looking for the angular.json configuration file. This JSON file contains the configuration about HTML, main TypeScript file, polyfill TypeScript, and TypeScript config application JSON file and our global style sheet file. These configurations are part of the build process. Also if you see, angular.json file uses tsconfig.app.json file. This file is used to define the application level configurations, in turn it imports, global configuration file, tsconfig.json. We may have doubt, why do we need a global configuration, and application level configuration files? Angular allows you to create multiple applications within the same workspace or project, so each application can have its own configuration, and can import a global configuration. Now we will move back to Angular CLI. Angular got the details such as main TypeScript file, index HTML file and CSS informations. Main TypeScript is the entry point to the application main module which needs to be initiated to start the application. In main TypeScript file, we have a method which calls app module. We will move to app module or application module now, it is the base module TypeScript file which contains the component details which needs to be rendered. In bootstrap property, we have defined app component or application component. As we have seen in our last video, app component.ts file has component annotation, which has few properties like selector, template URLs, and style URLs. These type scripts are compiled or transpiled into the browser. Now we will come back to the index.html file as mentioned in our angular.json file. This HTML file contains app root tag, as per our component configuration property, selector, this particular app root tag will be rendered with the HTML content, that is part of the app component HTML. We will make some changes in our code and will try to understand more on how these components are rendered in the browser. First we will start with main.typescript file. This is the entry point of the Angular as per our configuration JSON files. If you look at the line number 18, main.ts file is mentioned. Now we will change the main.ts file name, just to check how it is going to work. I will rename main.ts, to, launcher, dot, ts. We renamed the file, so we have to make changes in our JSON configuration files also. In angular.json file, we will make it as launcher.ts, and save the file. Now we need to make the same change in config.app.json file. We will make it as launcher.ts, and save the file. Now we will run the command to start the application. ng, serve, hypen, o. Application is getting built. Now you can see, the application is getting loaded into the browser successfully. We will come back to Visual Studio and will make few other changes. Let's go to launcher.ts file, if you see in line number 12, it is mentioned as app module. So this is the base application module, which in turn calls the base component. Now we will rename this app module to base module. And we'll make the same changes in the import statement also and save the file. Now if you see, it will show error, because this particular class is not available in the app.module.ts file. We will make the changes in app module file also. In line number 12, we have export statement, 
we will make the app module renamed as base module and save the file. Now there are no compilation issues. An application built successfully. Let's check in the browser, if it shows any error. No errors in browser, it's working fine. Now we will go back to the Visual Studio and will do few more changes. We will make the app component renamed as base, component. We will apply these changes in all the places, and save the file. Once again we are seeing issues in the compilation. To resolve this issue, we will go to app component.ts file, and, rename the exported class name, as, base component. And let's save the file. Now no compilation errors. Let's check the browser, if there are any issues. No, application is loaded successfully. Fine, now we will clear the HTML and make few changes to it. Go back to Visual Studio Code, in the it component annotation, we have template URL property. Let's change that to template, and we will set the value as some HTML content. We will put some paragraph tag with value as, white gators. Save the file. Go to the browser and check, yes, the content which we typed in the component ts file is loaded here. So instead of defining the template in separate file, we can put the changes directly here. Now we will check about the CSS content also. In Visual Studio Code, we will change the style URLs, into, styles, and, set the value, as paragraph, bracket, color, red. Save the file, and check the browser, now the color is set to red. In Visual Studio, we would have seen that everything is in single line, what about multiple lines? Yes, we can set multiple lines. But for that we need to replace the single quotes with backtick, or, grave accent. Let's change the content by adding heading tag. Now if you see the browser, contents are loaded correctly, similarly we can change the CSS also into multi-line. In our upcoming sections, mostly we will use this type of templates and styles so that we can understand the changes easily. We will see more basic concepts in our next section.